now friends what i am going to do i just uh, tell all of you that the formula p0 is equal to d1 divided by k minus e dear students this formula has a small derivation as we know that say in examination never derivation is asked upon yet what happens at say the subsequent series of the questions which i am going to cover in that at certain points i will tell you that say we cannot apply this formula even though apparently you feel that say this formula is applicable but i'll tell you that say no this formula cannot be applied i will be able to explain you that say why it cannot be cannot be applied only if i have explained you the derivation of the formula so not from examination point of view only from the understanding point of view i am showing the derivation of the formula so understanding the derivation so that say you can learn the subsequent portion of the uh, question that is the questions properly dear students we understand that what is the current price of a security current price of a security is in a simple language equal to the present value of the cash inflow whatever investor is going to receive in future the same is discounted in present value term to compute the price that investor is ready to pay we have seen number of examples when it, when it was a preference share when it was debenture when it was bond at that point of time we had a certain amount of the cash flow in form of interest in form of preference dividend in form of redemption value all of them are discounted in present value term in order to make the calculation of the price of the security similarly we have a concept of making calculation of the price of equity share that is p0 p stands for the price and zero stands for the current price that is at this point of time what price is going on is what we understand is the p0 okay now we understand that say as an investor when i purchase a security what i am going to receive is dividend so current market price of the security is equal to the future dividend which i am going to receive its discounted value so p0 is equal to d1 divided by 1 plus k raised to 1 plus d1 into 1 plus k raised to 1 divided by 1 plus k raised to 2 in a way that so the first year dividend is discounted with the first year factor second year the dividend is discounted with the second year factor plus third year dividend d1 into third year dividend is d1 into 1 plus k raised to 2 divided by 1 plus k raised to 3 and so on whatever is the nth year dividend what is the nth year dividend it is d1 into 1 plus k raised to n divided by 1 plus k raised to n plus 1 so the present value of the future cash flow is the price now we have to simplify this equation and this equation will result into p0 is equal to d1 divided by k minus c okay next p0 is equal to d1 divided by x plus d1 into y upon x raised to 2 plus d1 into y raised to 2 divided by x raised to 3 and so on 
that is v1 into y raised to n upon x raised to n plus 1. This is equation number 1. So simply what I have done, 1 plus g is assigned y variable and 1 plus k is assigned x variable for the purpose of deriving the equation. Now friends, for the purpose of derivation, there is a simple rule. You can multiply something on both the sides. You may divide something on both the sides. Like whatever you want to do, you can do simultaneously on both the sides. So for the purpose of derivation of the formula, I multiply x upon y on both the sides. So multiply x upon y on both sides. Okay. So we understand that say P0 into x upon y is equal to d1 upon x into x upon y. d1 into y divided by x raised to 2 into x upon y d1 into y raised to 2 divided by x raised to 3 into x upon y and so on. The last one is d1 into y raised to n upon x raised to n plus 1 into x upon y. This is the way I multiply x upon y on both the sides. So we understand friends over here that say this xx is getting cancelled. This x is getting cancelled instead of raised to 2 it will become raised to 1. This yy is getting cancelled. This x is cancelled instead of 3 it will become 2. This y is cancelled instead of 2 it will become 1. For the last way, that is variable, x will be cancelled instead of x raised to n plus 1, it will be n. y will be cancelled <coughs> instead of n, it will be n minus 1. Okay. So now we understand that say, p0 x upon y is equal to d1 divided by y. Okay, d1 upon y plus d1 upon x plus d1 into y upon x raised to 2 and so on. The last value will be d1 into y raised to n minus 1 divided by x raised to n. This is the way we have, let us say the equation number 2. Now friends, for the purpose of so the derivation, what will happen? The values of the equation number 1 will be kept under equation number 2 with the change inside. So these values will be kept under equation number 2 with the change inside. So minus P0. Then minus d1 upon x then minus d1 into y upon x raised to 2 and so on. The last value is d1 into y raised to n d1 into y raised to n divided by x raised to n plus 1. So its preceding will be d1 into y raised to n minus 1 divided by x raised to n. So this is the way, say so we have the equation number 1 to be kept under equation number 2. So now what happens friends, the common values will be eliminated. So this is common, eliminate. This is common, so eliminate. And so on, so all these things will be eliminated. 
Okay. After making this elimination, we will be having say something like this. P0 x upon y. P0 x upon y. Minus P0 is equal to D1 upon y. Minus D1 into y raised to n divided by x raised to n plus 1. Okay. Now friends, basically this amount is going to be received after a very long period of time. As this amount is going to be received after a very long period of time, so its present value is very negligible. It is not like that, so it does not have a present value, but its present value is very negligible. So it is considering to be zero, the formula is derived. Because if at all you use the calculator and you compute the discounting factor for 50th year, for 100th year, then in that case its present value will be very negligible. So now we are taking over here P0 common. So P0 is taken common x upon y minus 1 is equal to d1 upon y. Okay. So we understand that so over here 1 upon 1 and, and x upon y. We will take the LCM and LCM will be y. So P0 is equal to x minus y upon y. I'm sorry. P0 into x minus y upon y. Is equal to d1 upon y. So now y is cancelled on both the sets. So P0 into what is the value of the x? You can see that so the value of the x is 1 plus k. So we understand that say over here it is 1 plus k minus what is the value sorry what is x 1 plus k and what is y 1 plus e is equal to d0 so d1 so p0 into 1 plus k minus 1 minus e is equal to d1 so now positive 1 and negative 1 is cancelled against one another so P0 is equal to D1 upon K minus E. That is the way, so we will have P0. This is the way the formula is derived. So this is the way we have the derivation of the simple formula. Wherein we understand that say, the future dividend income is said discounted in present value term. I just want to tell you one more thing that many a times I come across to a question that sir, why do we deduct G over here? That is a question. See that question cannot have an answer. Why G is deducted? For that say you need to understand the derivation of the formula. That say basically the concept is very simple that present value of the cash inflow is the current price of the security. That is the, like the basic concept that we have. So you cannot have a simple like the answer of a question that why is G is deducted. Okay. So thank you friends putting it into lecture. Thank you.